Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's start out with defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. So you had some idea what to do and how to do this search, right? Some idea. Is it your testimony that before Saturday morning, November 5th, you had not done anything in terms of investigating or searching for Lynn or her vehicle? No, I haven't, hadn't. And after that, did you also do any additional investigation on your own? Yes, I did. And did you, in fact, were you, in fact, called to an area near Michicot by some individuals who had found what they thought might be some evidence? I don't recall being called by someone, no. Well, did you, were you with somebody looking in the area of Michicot? We were in the area of Michicot, and I spoke with some of the business owners in Michicot. Those were bars, right? That's correct. And they were down near the river. No, this was about, the river is about a quarter mile from the actual town. Okay, and what day was that? I'm not sure. Well, was it Saturday night? Was it nighttime or daytime? No, it was during the day. So it was, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, one of those days that I had a day off and I wanted to help out. And what was your purpose? in going to those bars and talking to those to see business owners, to see if anyone knew anything about Lynn or had seen Lynn. Okay, and were you passing out your name and phone number or anything like that for people? I don't recall doing that, no. Do you remember being called to an area near the river, a turnaround area near the river by one of those individuals from the bar area to look at some? I know we had searched around the river area and then at that point we, meaning one of the bar owners in town, said he would come down and help me out and on the search we had found a cell phone and what was that bar owner's name i don't recall do you remember do you know an individual by the name of john camp i'm not sure if that was his name or not okay and you found a cell phone down by the river yes and also some business papers some sort of papers nearby I don't recall any papers, but that cell phone you thought might be important. I thought perhaps it was important. For all you know, it could have been Lynn's, right? Could have been. So what did you do? I called the sheriff's department and someone came down and photographed the cell phone. And who was that, Mr. Weigert? No, I'm not sure, exactly sure who that was. I believe I got his card though. Was he plain clothes? No, he was wearing a deputy's brown uniform. That is correct. Which county sheriff are we talking about? I'm not sure. Well, this is Michicot, so that's Manitowoc County, right? I would assume. So you would assume that it was probably a Manitowoc County Sheriff deputy that came down there, right? There were so many police officers at the Avery Salvage Yard at that time, it could have been anyone. This wasn't at the Avery Salvage Yard, was it? No, this was miles away over in Michicot, a couple miles away, yeah. And the cell phone, you said somebody took pictures of it, that's right. And did that individual also take possession of the cell phone? Yes. And what happened next? We met up with the search party again, and I described the cell phone to the Hallbecks, I believe, and they said it wasn't Lynn's. What, did you make any notes of what kind of cell phone it was? I did at that time. I knew what it was. Now, I can't recall. Okay, but you didn't take any pictures of your own, though? No, and you don't know what day this was. It could have been Sunday the 6th. It was after the 5th. Okay, so it could have been the 6th, right? No, I don't think I worked on the 6th. I think I had off on Monday or Tuesday and I went back to help out. Okay, now you are not a private investigator at this point, right? No, I'm not. And you weren't back in October of 2005? No, I wasn't. You were just 
helping out as a volunteer for the Hunter family at that time, yes. And you said that Ryan, when you met on Saturday morning, Ryan Hill gave you a direct phone number for Sheriff Pagel, yes. So he had, evidently he had Sheriff Pagel's direct line. It was either the direct line or the line into that department. Well, when you called it, it got right to Sheriff Pagel's voice on his voicemail, right? Voicemail, yes, okay. But we did talk to the dispatch too. I know, that's later though. The number you called just put you right to Sheriff Pagel's voicemail, correct? Yes. When you saw the vehicle there up on that ridge and you said you thought it was 90% in your own mind that this might be, in fact, Lynn's vehicle, you of course looked inside for Lynn as well, right? Correct. And you got a decent look inside there because you actually saw some soda bottles too, I think, right? We did see some soda bottles, okay, and you didn't see Lynn, right? No, and you didn't see any blood, right? Not that we could visually see, no. Okay, well, you didn't see any blood, period, no. Okay, and you were looking, what else did you see besides soda bottles? See anything with her name on it? No, I can't remember anything, no. Okay, if I understood you correctly, did you say that you actually found this vehicle within 10 minutes of your search? No, sir. I thought you said you went in at 10.10 and you found it at, or 10 minutes to 10, is that right? That's correct. Okay, I misunderstood, I apologize. So you found it within about 30, 35 minutes or so? That's correct. And when you walked up on that ridge, it was the only car with any kind of branches or wood or debris put on top of it, right? That I saw, yes. All the other ones looked like they did. They do in this photo here. They are generally visible, not hidden or anything of that sort, right? I guess I didn't look any further down the line, so I can't really say absolutely, you know, okay, but of the vehicles of the area, area you did look through, which would have been from the buildings in the upper left corner where actually is the northeast corner south all the way to that edge of the Avery property. You didn't see any other vehicles that were appeared to have been obscured or covered with anything? No. So this one was unique of all of the vehicles that you saw, right? And it was about the right color and it was a RAV4. And to you it looked pretty obvious that this was somebody just trying to hide this, right? It appeared to be that way, but it was actually double parked along that ridge of vehicles on the left, or I'm sorry, on that car path you mentioned behind the pond, right? Right, those were a single line of cars and this one was double parked right next to one, right. On the tape I heard you say something, I think, about there were people nearby while you were at the scene and calling in to report this. When we first walked down the quarry, there's that's a simple yes or no, were there people, you said something, about there being people nearby, right? Yes, and these appeared to be what? Other customers or something milling about? I can't say for sure, but I thought perhaps they were getting parts off of vehicles, okay, like customers would do there, right? Right, and Stephen Avery wasn't one of them, I assume, right? No, and you mentioned a man up on the ridge, or not on the ridge, but up on the hill, kind of back towards the buildings, when you were sitting there waiting for 20 minutes, correct, and Stephen Avery wasn't that man either, was he? I don't know for sure. Well, who was that man? Do you know? I don't know. Do you have any description of him? No, sir. Was it the same? Was it Earl Avery? It could have been. It's just too far away to see. So you just wasn't anything in particular about that man or what he was doing that caused you concern. It was just the overall feeling you had that maybe this wasn't the safest place to be. Is that fair? That's fair, yes. Okay, and until the police arrived, 
you were, we are about to finish up, Judge. Until the police arrived, you were trying to keep an eye on that vehicle, make sure none of these other customers or anybody else would walk near, right? That's correct. But once the police arrived then, that was their job, right? No, we kept our eye on it. Once Manitowoc arrived, you were concerned about Manitowoc police approaching that vehicle, about anyone approaching or touching that vehicle. And so you kept a good eye to make sure none of the Manitowoc people would do, do it, that anyone would do it. But if you were about a thousand, what did you say, a thousand yards away, a thousand feet away? I'm not very good at distance, right? By the car compactor. Okay, but then after Weigert, after Detective Remaker arrived, you went back over by the, to the left on this picture, did you not? I think you said you went about a thousand yards away. Could you rephrase that? I believe maybe I misunderstood you, but I thought I thought you said that you walked about a thousand yards away from where the vehicle was when Detective Weigert arrived. Like I said, I'm not very good at distance. I would say three football fields. Now I'm trying to judge the distance that way. Okay, 900 yards, a thousand yards, close enough. And you weren't paying attention at that point then to what was going on with the car from that big of distance away once once investigator Weigert arrived, right? Judge, I'm sorry, I know this is late, but a football field is only 100 yards. Three of them wouldn't be 900. If my math, you are right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it is late, 900 feet. But after Weigert arrived, you were talking to investigator Weigert gave an oral statement to him, right? Right. And you talked to Dieter and gave an oral and written statement to him, right? Correct. All right, that will conclude our Q&A practice.